Hello and thanks for tuning in to yet another edition of Executive Econom Expert Talks. My name is Monica and I welcome you all to this very special episode. Today, we have the pleasure to speak to Dr. Rebecca Medholdridge for the first time. She is the Chief Operating Officer of Chimeric Therapeutics. Talking about the company, Chimeric Therapeutics, the ticker code CHM, a four years old company has some interesting updates. They are advancing three platform technologies through multiple phase 1A and phase 1B clinical trials. The company is developing first in class autologous CAR T cell therapies and best in class allogeneic NK cell therapies. Let's speak to Dr. Rebecca, the Chief Operating Officer of Chimeric Therapeutics, bringing extensive senior level experience from the world's top pharma companies in the US and Australia. She has a doctorate of philosophy in cell therapy from the Nash University. Notably, she was instrumental in establishing strategic partnerships with companies like Telstra and West Farmers in one of her previous companies. Now she's leading Chimeric from the front. So let's dig in and find out some interesting insights about the company. Dr. Rebecca, we greatly value your presence here today. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So to start with Dr. Rebecca, could you give us your view, um, you know, your views about the Chimeric Therapeutics current portfolio of cell therapy for our viewers? Yeah, so um, Chimeric Therapeutics, we're really pioneers in cell therapies. We have mm -hmm. three novel cell technology platforms and we have four phase one trials running uh, at, across the US right now. So we're in a really unique position in Australia as being one of the front runners in cell therapy. Sure. So to put it forward, Dr. Rebecca, Primeric has advanced to a phase 1B trial for acute myeloid leukemia patients, which is also a type of blood cancer, right? So how does this trial aim to innovate or improve upon current treatments for this cancer? Yeah, so this uh, is a really interesting uh, study. So we were actually called by MD Anderson, uh, the, ca the cancer center, which is the number one cancer hospital in the world. And they rang us and said, hey, we've got a really great idea. We'd love to use your NK cell platform. Um, and so we said yes. And this is really exciting because it uses two standard of care products that are FDA registered, plus our um, cell therapy, which is an off the shelf cell therapy. And this is called an allogeneic uh, natural killer cell. And basically we take cells from healthy donors. We can manufacture multiple doses and have them hanging ready in the pharmacy to dose patients. And so we think that this is a really unique opportunity um, to enhance the use of cell therapy across the world, but also to treat the really nasty blood cancer AML. So what we've seen so far, we've dosed six patients already at MD Anderson, and we're moving really quickly into the uh, second cohort now, uh, which is really exciting. So um, everything's moving really well. And I think the fact that MD Anderson rang us and said, hey, we want your asset, uh, is really a, a validating piece for the asset there. That's really interesting. So to gain insights into future implications, Dr. Rebecca, how do you foresee this combination therapy impacting the treatment landscape for acute uh, myeloid leukemia in the future? So we have to first establish if it's safe and then we can move on to see if it's going to be efficacious when we move to the next group of patients. And I'm really excited to see that progression. Uh, what we think will happen is with any kind of off the shelf product, it'll be there ready to go uh, for the patients who need it the most. And so that's what we're really looking forward to in the future. Sure. As Chimeric has initiated the first in-human clinical trial for CDH17 CAR T cell therapy for gastrointestinal uh, cancers, which also makes it the first company in the world to be doing this, could you also outline the specific objectives and endpoints of this trial for us? Yeah, so this, this trial is really, really exciting. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to join Chimeric and this particular asset um, a technology out of UPenn who were the inventors of, of CAR T therapy, if you like. So we have a big, uh, a great relationship with them and a lot of trust in the technology. The CDH17 is, is really interesting. So this is actually a picture of it behind me um, and uh, over, over expressed on the cancer there. You can see it all over the purple cells, the green there. Um, and CDH17 in a cancer cell of a gastric, pancreatic or colorectal nature 
it sits all on the top of the surface of the cancer and there's so much of it. So what we uh, with Penn have decided to do is target a car so the T cells can see that solid tumour and fight it at the site. So we have um, enrolled our first patient, which we announced on Monday, which was very exciting. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to treating 15 patients over the next 12 months or so, uh, all things going well. Um, and so initially we'll have to establish safety. So for all cell therapy trials across the world, we have a bit of a go slow for the first three patients because we wanna make sure that, because like you said, we're the first company in the world to try this target in a CAR T, um, we'll be the first um, to test it in humans. It's so exciting. We need to make sure that we have 28 days between patients. And so that's an FDA mandate for all cell therapy trials. That's not just unique for this one. When we dose our first patient, we have to wait 28 days until we dose the next one to make sure everything's safe. Uh, and then once we establish that everything's safe and we're right to move forward, we can get a little bit faster. Um, and with this particular trial, it's really exciting because the team have done such a great job to get it pre-approved for phase two already. So once we deem that it's safe, we can quickly move into phase two and then look at partnering or licensing and the great results that we can see when it comes to measuring the efficacy. That's exciting. And this surely is going to be transformation provided all the parameters are met. Also, congratulations on securing a US patent for CHM0207. How does this patent issuance impact your company's strategic positioning in the field of cancer therapies? So this is a, about the off-the-shelf product and it's really a unique technology that I have a PhD in. Um, so I know a lot about this technology, but it's a really great uh, platform that we can use to expand our NK cells to make multiple doses and have them ready hanging in the pharmacy, like I mentioned. So the patent just means that we can commercialize that technology and have it operating all around the world eventually uh, when we get there. Sure. And since we were also talking about collaboration, what, what role do collaborations and partnerships play in advancing primary therapeutics resource and development efforts in cancer cell therapies? Yeah, so quite a big part. So obviously we have really great partnerships with our technology founders at UPenn, at Case Western and at City of Hope in the US. And I think for me, I've only been in the seat for, of Chimeric for 12 weeks now. I can't say I'm new anymore, I don't think. But my job is to take a look at what Australian partnerships we can use um, to make sure that Australians get the benefit of our amazing technology. Uh, so I'll be taking a close look at that as well. But I think the biggest partnership that we have right now that I'm fostering a lot of energy into is our partnership with MD Anderson Cancer Centre. They are predominantly paying for that AML trial that we spoke about, which is really great. Uh, and they're also coming online as a site for CDH17 for the, the gastric and bowel cancer target um, so we've got a really great relationship there and i think you know if i'm ever in a position to buy technology we'd, we'd go there first but um also not uh, uh mistaking uh, i'd love to get some australian technology under the chimeric umbrella that would be fantastic people love to talk about future so lastly uh, dr abeka to help our viewers understand your vision could you also outline the clinical milestones that Chimera Therapeutics aim to achieve over the next 12 months? Yeah, so over the next 12 months, um, we really want to hone in on this CDH17 trial. We want to get all of the patients in. So we're aiming for 15 patients in phase one. Uh, and then if we deem it safe, we can get up and out into phase two. So that's really where our focus lies. Um, we're going to make a few tweaks to our chlorotoxin and brain cancer program and that's really exciting. I think we're going to make it better than ever. So stay tuned for those updates. And then for our NK program, um, we want to make sure that we have a data readout from the AML trial so we can decide how we progress into phase two. And we've also got another trial running for that platform at Case Western for our solid tumour target, which is colorectal cancer, um, which is live and recruiting now. So we hope to see some results um, by probably the first half of next year from that one. So a lot of things happening at Chimeric. We've got three novel technologies and four phase ones up and running. There should be a lot of news flow coming ahead. So that brings us to the conclusion of our interview today. We sincerely thank you for your time and the comprehensive answers you've provided. But just before I let you go, any final thoughts or message for our audience, Dr. Rebecca? I think when you're thinking about investing in Chimeric, there's a few things that I'd, I'd leave you with. Um, we have a, a, a 
quite an interesting valuation anomaly right now. For some reason, no one values us and and maybe I've got to change that and that's what I'm here to do. Um, but take a, take a closer look and I'm always here to answer questions. We've got four trials running with four of uh, three F FDA INDs, which is really powerful um, and we'll have lots of news flow coming in the next 12 months. And as I mentioned, our main focus is going to be CDH17, which is right behind me, um, focus for um, gastric bowel cancers uh, with CAR-T. But I've been here for a short time and I'm going to be here for a long time and I can't wait to take Chimeric to the next level. Lovely, really good to know that. That's Dr. Rebecca, the COO of Chimeric Therapeutics. In case you have missed any bit of this interview, you can certainly catch the full interview on our YouTube channel at Calcan Media and hear what she has to say about Chimeric's recent advancements. Do like, share and subscribe. This is Monica signing off now.